Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be a Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video on the Kaiju Zoo deck that I played this past weekend at YCS Pittsburgh 2017. Now, ultimately I didn't do very well, I literally only played three rounds, I won round one and then lost round two and three, and then just dropped and went and started having fun in the city with my friends and stuff that were with me, and all that sort of stuff, but I still feel like this was definitely the best deck for the event, and it was the deck that I was most comfortable playing for the event in terms of knowing what I needed to do turn one. Now, the big shortcoming I had was that I was really busy throughout the week leading up into Pittsburgh, and I didn't really have time to test any mirror matches with the deck. I definitely knew how to play against other matchups like True Draco uh, and uh, the True King Dinosaur deck, but basically against the mirror, I knew what to do turn one, but then as soon as things evolved into grind games, which is very incredibly easy with this deck playing mirror matches, I was at an extreme disadvantage for not knowing exactly how to handle the grind game in that matchup. So like that was just that was my shortcoming, but it was what it was whatever. It was fine. I literally had a friend that traveled with me to the event just to hang out and not play. And so as soon as like I got my second loss, I was like, alright, I'm not going to sit here for the rest of this. I'm just going to go hang out with him. And uh, and we just like started drinking and doing stuff like that. So I had a ton of fun in Pittsburgh. I would definitely do it again. I would just probably wish to be a little bit more prepared next time. But anyway, this is a 40 card deck. Uh, there are 22 monsters in it. I played uh, two Rap here, obviously. Three Whiptail, uh, one Thoroughblade, and one Zodiac Ram Ram. Ram Ram was amazing. I kind of wish that I had a second Thoroughblade in my deck. Uh, because it really benefits you in the grind game, and that was coming up a lot whenever I was uh, losing games, uh, was the fact that like the second Thoroughblade was always amazing whenever my opponent had it, uh, because of the fact that like they would just had you, you, they just had the ability to do all this sorts of stuff, um, where like they could just make their stuff bigger than mine uh, in simplified game states, and that's really important. But uh, triple speed roid Teratop and one Taka Tomborg. Uh, I didn't draw this card any of the eight games I played, so I guess that's lucky. Um, but I drew Teratop a lot, and that was pretty cool. Uh, one Lunalite Black Sheep, I also didn't draw this in any of the games I played, but I drew the other Garnet, X Saber Palomaru. I literally drew this card in my opening hand every single game that I played, all eight games. Now, two of those games, it was amazing because I was going first and I was able to just make like uh, Dryden and uh, Nat Beast and like Dweller uh, going against my opponent, uh, not knowing what they were playing. And like, that's just amazing. Like, if I'm playing against anything zoo oriented, um, they can't do their fusion sub combos because fusion sub can't do anything from Grave. Um, if they're, uh, it makes their Ram Ram not do anything against True Draco, it obviously, like, you're under the Nat Beast and Dweller, so you can't, you know, do anything to the Nat Beast other than, like, tribute a monster and try to punch over it, but Dryden outs that. Like, all these different, like, things, but Palomaru, I literally drew it in my opening hand every single game I played, all eight games. I was eight for eight in drawing Palomaru, and, uh, honestly, it's not really that great. Like, summoning Nat Beast wasn't even, like, really that amazing. Um, like, it was great in, like, the situations that it was done. But it still wasn't like what defined the game. It was definitely an auto win, but it was like one of those things where like if this had been any other card, it probably still would have been just as good because it was like Dweller Dryden boards that I was putting it with, and those were doing most of the work. So I don't know. Things to consider. I'd probably swap this for the second Thoroughblade and also free up extra deck space. But I played three Kaijus. I played one Gamma Seal, one Cumungus, and one uh, Jizakiru just to be the big one to uh, summon off Slumber. But to have two small ones. Uh, that were summonable just by drawing them and stuff like that. Uh, the reason I played these two specifically and this one instead of like Doggeran is Gamma Seal is obviously the smallest one you want to give them that. Uh, but some people like played Doggeran in this slot. Uh, but the thing is this one's 24, this is the second smallest one. And so you kind of want that in this deck specifically because like Tanky plus two Whiptails lets your Dryden or whatever attack over this. Um, like that's actually just relevant. Um, or like Thoroughblade in a Whiptail lets you attack over it instead of having to waste your Dryden pop on a Doggeran because it's so big. Uh, you can just give them a kaiju that's uh, small enough to attack over. But then I played a bunch of hand traps. I played triple ghost ash, uh, one max C, and then two droll and lock birds. Uh, droll and lock was amazing. Droll and lock was insane uh, against zoo, against uh, true Draco, anything like in theory and in testing and in the tournament itself. Um, if you like just droll and lock them when they go like tinky for rat, like usually they just like can't do much other than just summon rat and like make Dryden because you can't make emerald. Um, you can draw and lock them when they add the Lunalite -like Black Sheep, and then they're like they've committed their resource and their play string into a into a fusion sub combo, and they can't like adjust to a new combo string, and then also they can't make Emerald. Like that was just insane. Draw and lock was definitely the like the best card in my main deck, uh, 100 percent. Um, as far as a hand trap goes, Ghost Ash is kind of cool because it like negated slumbers and shit, but it, most of the time Ghost Ash's effect in the Zoo Mirror is literally just discard a card and your opponent keeps going so like it's a it's a problem with that card but anyway that's 22 monsters there are 15 spells uh triple zoo barrage 
and triple fire formation tanky to be starter cards. I mean, obviously these cards are just great for starters because there's extra copies of rat uh, and gives the deck like an 81 or 82 percent chance of opening a starter card. So I mean, that's good. Uh, and the fact that like with uh, with Leica in the deck now, literally any of like your other zoos, like if you draw Whiptail or Thurblade or Ram Ram as your only zoo monster, that's still draw two with a fusion sub combo. So any of your zoos are still Pot of Greed ending on Emerald and a draw. So like that's that's still fine. But continuing on, I played Triple Instant Fusion. Uh, I think it's just correct to play three of this card. It's like the best extender in your deck. It's a superior extender. Um, and it's one of those things that just contributes to combos very well. And also allows you to play through hand traps very well. Uh, but then two copies of Fusion Sub. Uh, one isn't enough and three is way too many. Uh, you want to be able to draw four and draw five and do all that sort of stuff. So that's kind of the point. But uh, two Interrupted Kaiju Slumbers, because I'm playing Kaijus, and then two uh, Cosmic Cyclone. I didn't want to put play three of this, uh, just because I'm playing a lot of cards that like pay life in terms of like the Triple Instant Fusion, which I'm trying to resolve every turn that I have it in hand, um, and then these, and then I'm playing Strikes and Warning in my deck and stuff like that, and it just it starts stacking up pretty quickly. But Cosmic Cyclone is still a pretty good card. I kind of actually miss this being like not MST. Um, like, uh, once or twice, because, like, I had an Orden Engrave, and I drew Fusion Sub, and I had this, and if it was MST, then I would just be able to Im set my Fusion Sub and MST to shuffle my Norden back for a draw, uh, and then been able to, like, Instant Fusion or something, so, like, things like that came up, but it was very niche, and so I still think it would be, like, Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, but then I played three Traps in the main, I played two Strike and a Warning, uh, just because Trap cards are pretty good, I hear, at least these ones are, uh, being able to set those after drawing, f like, three to five cards is actually just great. Uh, so you just want to do that, but carrying on for the extra deck, I played uh, two copies of Zoo Dryden, two copies of Zoo Broadbull, one copy of uh, Chaka Nine in the extra, uh, one copy of Tiger Mortar, one copy of Borbo, and then one Hammer Kong. So um, a lot of people play two Chaka Nine, but because I was playing the Nat Beast stuff, I had to side the second Chaka Nine uh, for the games where I take the Nat Beast out. So I just didn't have room for it in the uh, in the uh, in the regular extra deck, uh, but it, it worked out fine um, as far as like that goes. But one MX Saber Invoker, two copies of Digusto Emerald. I actually really want to play three of this card uh, because once you make the first one, um, as soon as like that gets outed, you are basically reliant on your second Emerald like sticking, or else if they out that Emerald, like if they if they Dryden pop it, if they Ash it and then kill it, um, if they uh, if they strike it on summon, like that's your resource pool completely gone. Uh, so three Emerald just might actually just be like the way forward with this deck because like if you if they strike or out the second Emerald and both Emeralds are gone then you are really at a disadvantage in the zoo grind. Um, so, like, playing the third one would just probably come up just to start putting the other ones back uh, and stuff like that. But then, uh, one Dweller and one King of the Feralimps to go with the uh, Nat Beast combo. Uh, this card is probably great, uh, but I never made it because, like I said, all eight games I played, I drew the Polamaru. So, <laughs> we. Uh, but Nat Beast was cool. Uh, I still don't think I would ever play it again. I don't think I'd play it again specifically with how the format is. I think just playing pure zoo and then just more, like, regular extenders... Um, or there's like just more cards like extra copies of Thoroughblade and extra things in your extra deck that make your deck inherently better in the grind are just better than trying to play these auto win cards. Uh, but then Dweller was great. Dweller is fantastic. Even in the Zoo matchup, that card's pretty alright. Uh, and then the last card is obviously Norden, so I could do the fusion subs and the instant fusion combos. But So for the side deck, I played uh, three monsters in the side, I played three flying sea. These probably actually should have been in my main deck. They were in my main deck literally until I got in the registration line, and then I swapped them for Droll and Locks. Um, like, Droll and Lock was swapped into my main, and these were put into my side. Um, like, this card was fantastic, though. Like, this card is Dimensional Barrier from your hand. It kind of sucks against Draco Zoo, but you have to kind of, they have to be, a little, like, really reliant on being able to normal summon Masterpiece in order to get over this. Um, and then with, like, regular Zoo, like, you can just do this when they summon their Norton, and if they've already used Barrage for the turn, their turn literally ends. Um, and, like, that's just fantastic. Uh, that's just a wonderful interaction. Uh, but then, cited two copies of My Body and then two copies of Chalice for the appropriate matchups where one is better than the other. Uh, like, these cards are still just really strong. And then I played a lot of traps in my side. Uh, a lot of traps for the mirror in my side. Uh, I played two Mirror Force in the side, two Dimensional Barrier in the side, the third Solemn Strike in the side. Uh, so these literally always came in in the mirror when I was going, uh, when I was going uh, first or second. These all came in all the time. And uh, if I was going first, the strike came in as well. So, like, uh, these four cards were just always in my deck post-sided games in the mirror. 
uh, because they're great going first and they're great going second. Because like you can literally go second to your opponent's board and just set a mirror force, and they just always play into it. Um, that's the thing. But then Dimensional Barrier was actually not as good as I like, was expecting it to be. Uh, you'd think that it would just be an exact same like like formula for how it operated in the past formats with Zoo being dominant, but it actually just doesn't. I don't quite understand why yet. I definitely need to do a lot more playtesting and figure out why that is, but it just literally, like, I would Dimensional Barrier people expecting it to end their turn, and then it just didn't. And I was like, what the fuck's happening? Uh, but strike the third strike was fine. Um, I really wish that I could have fit it in the main deck. I probably should have just played 41. Uh, but then the last trap in the side is Macrocosmos. This card is great against uh, the Dino deck. It's great against uh, the, True, uh, the uh, True Draco deck. Um, and then just rank, like, I played this again for, like, just random cleanup for, like, random decks I might play against, like, if anyone decided to play, like, uh, Light Sworn or Infernoid or whatever, uh, this card's great in those matchups, too. But, didn't make it that far into the tournament, uh, for that to be a thing. Uh, but then the last two cards in my side deck were extra deck cards to side in whenever I took the Nat Beast stuff out of my deck going, uh, second, or where it just wasn't applicable, and that was a second copy of Shaka 9, and a Totem Bird. Uh, this, this could literally be, like, anything else. It could be, like, third Emerald, it could be second Tiger Mortar. Um, like, it could be a few different things. I'd probably prefer it to be a second Tiger Mortar. I just didn't have one on me. Uh, but Totem Bird kind of comes up. Um, it comes up in situations like when you think that your opponent is on the same sort of uh, wavelength as you are in siding cards like Mirror Force uh, for the Mirror Match specifically. Uh, where Totem Bird is like a card that really comes up there of all places because you can just like tear a top into Totem Bird and then invalidate like cards like Mirror Force. But I don't think it actually was like real. Um, it was just like, it was like a little like five minute theory that I had when I built my deck, but regardless, it just ended up, uh, it ended up being a thing that happened, but, so anyway, that is the deck that I played at YCS Pittsburgh, like I said, I, it, take this for like whatever it's worth, it literally just looks like a regular Zoo Kaiju deck, uh, like it's, it's not anything too outlandish, and I only played three rounds, <laughs> because like I said, I literally played zero mirror matches, uh, play testing for this event, and so I just wasn't familiar with how the grind game was supposed to be structured, and that is where I literally lost. Like, any games any games where it didn't get into a grind, and it was literally just us throwing resources back and forth at each other, and we both had a lot of cards to work with, I always won those games. But as soon as it got down to a simplified game state, grind game, where we both had very few resources and very few cards, it got down to a point where, uh, where I was just at a disadvantage because I didn't know how to handle my resource pool as efficiently as my opponent did. So... There is that to consider, but hey, I'll just play test more for the next event that I enter. <laughs> like I just, I literally just didn't have time for this event. I just went and had fun, and that's literally all I can, all I can expect out of my hobby. Actually, like I, I didn't, it wasn't a bad time at all. Like it was kind of irritating because I just didn't get to play Yu-Gi-Oh, which is what I came there for. But at the same time, there was literally bars and clubs like on every street corner that I knew, and I had people that I knew that I was able to hang out with, and so I just went and had a fun time. So there is that. But anyway, that is the deck that I played at YCS Pittsburgh. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below, all that sort of nonsense. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are again in the comments down below. Links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook page and my Patreon page if you want to support the channel directly, help some projects come into fruition, and do all that sort of nonsense. Or if you just like my content and want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. There's also monthly giveaways and access into a Discord server where you can chat with me on a 24-hour basis if that's what you want to deal with. Those are hidden in the reward tiers of the Patreon itself. So definitely go check that out. But other than that, if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards, then definitely check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far. And almost all the zoo cards that you saw in this deck profile were supplied to me by Second Chance Gaming for playing and video making purposes. So they've gone above and beyond for uh, for supporting the channel in terms of helping me do things. So definitely check out their site and let them know the Phoenix sent you. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and all that sort of stuff as I've already said. And take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.